Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Um, today we are in the workshop again, but we're not making anything. Um, I'm actually going to do a more of a tabletop review, which I haven't been able to do strictly tabletop, like by the book on what it's normally considered as, because I never really had a tripod, and honestly I still don't have a tripod, but what I do have are those little welder clamp things. Uh, here, let me grab one for you. For the non-welders who don't know what they are. This is a welding clamp. So it adjusts. So right now my phone is being held up by one of these. Clamped in the jaws. And the tail is held in the jaws of my vice. On my, my bench vice. So yeah, talk about redneck engineering. But let me just put that back. Alrighty. So as I was saying, uh, we're going to do a tabletop review of this Kershaw Shuffle, commonly known as the Kershuffle um, in the um, knife world. Um, but before we go into that, a couple of things. Um, first off, sorry, I'm posting on Saturday again. Um, my week was a little crazy. Life happens, um, especially with this whole coronavirus thing. Um, so yeah, I might actually switch my posting day to Saturday. It might give me more time. <coughs> oh, excuse me, guys. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll let you know if I do switch the day. Um, but yeah, so that's the main thing. Um, so now let's start off with a couple specs of this. So as I said, this is the Kershaw Shuffle. Um, it has a overall length of 5.75 inches or five and three quarters um a blade length of 2.375 inches um and an actual cutting edge of exactly two inches um it is 0.11 inches thick for blade stock made out of this one is made out of three cr13 mov but the newer versions are made out of 8VR13 MOV. Um, it is a drop point style blade with a hollow ground, um, with a hollow grind, sorry guys. Um, the original has a um, bead blasted finish. Um, I took that off, but a little on that later. Um, this is a plain edge. Um, it has a total of three tools on it. Um, a handle length of three and a quarter inch. Um, handle thickness of 0.41 inches. Handles made out of GFN or glass filled nylon. A total of 2.8 ounces and comes out of China. Alright, so now that we're finished with that, I'm um, going to do some things we haven't done in a while because we haven't really done a full review in a while. And I apologize for that. But we're going to do some size comparisons. So, first off, the um, Coast G20 flashlight, a nice little, um, nice little flashlight to get started in with EDC lights. Um, so as you can see, the shuffle is a little bit longer when opened, but when it is closed, it's a little more than half the size. Um, I did forget to mention this has a reversible deep carry pocket clip, and it has thumb studs and. Um, Teflon washers. So yeah, that's it with that. So yep, that's it next to the G20 flashlight. Um, then we have a usual to my channel, the Pilot G2 Mini. There's it next to it. Oops. There's it next to it. Closed. And open. Yep, so right there. Let's get that out of the way. Um, next to it, uh, with a knife, we have the Spyderco Dragonfly 2 Salt with the hawk bill. And these are actually very similar. Um, in length, the Kershaw is a little bigger, but when you close them down, they're very similar on um, length. They're almost exact. And when it comes to being wide, it is a little bit um, 
narrower, I guess you would say, a little bit less wide than the Dragonfly 2. And then probably, whoops, hang on, got to do another usual, um, a standard size zip out, so right there. And then probably the most relevant um, comparison would be the squid, also another usual to the channel. So let's just open these up. Yeah, so right there. These are two very similar knives. They're almost exactly the same length. And uh, I'll be comparing these two throughout the entirety of the video. So now, um, now that is your size comparison. Let's move on to our good and our bad. Sorry guys if I seem a little, I don't know, unused to this. It's because I uh, am unused to this. I haven't, not used to this, I'm used to the same thing. Um, I haven't done one of these reviews in a while. So, all right, here we go. So the good, uh, what do we got with the good on your Kershaw Shuffle? So first off, Ergos. Ergos are really good. Um, with this forward finger choil, you get a full three finger grip, or at least I do. And as stated before, I do have about, I wear an XL um, size of glove. So, and it fits pretty comfortably. My pinky just hangs on there a little bit, but I did put that lanyard on so when I choke back, I have to come back here for some reason. My pinky has something to grab onto. And also it helps pulling it out of the pocket. So yep, that is very nice. Um, moving on, size. Um, it's a very compact size. Um, it's a great fifth pocket knife um, in the jeans or your um, carpenter pants or whatever. Um, it fits really anywhere. Um, but it, it's a very capable tool. I mean, they get about two inches of blade length on there, I believe. Of cutting edge um, and it actually works very well um, moving on is the belly this thing is basically all belly except for like maybe this like half inch right here something like that after that it is all belly so it's great for any kind of slicing you need to do um, this thing cuts through tape phenomenally phenomenal e sorry guys can't talk today um, and with that hollow grind it really helps get a nice thin edge um, another good thing about this um, it ha does have three tools um, not including the edge um, they have another version of this called the uh, DIY and it has I think right back here is like a uh, a what are those called not a hex wrench but you know it uses it's a bit driver that's what it is it has a bit driver in the back so instead of this little um, pry bar slash flathead screwdriver you get a uh, a driver and you also have a bottle opener right here um, I've never I don't think I've used that but I have used this as a pry bar and it works amazing I don't really carry this anymore um, just because I have my squid but um, when I did that was the biggest thing I missed was having not having that pry tool but now they have one on my keys we're all good there. So um, after that, um, simple. It's it's very it's a very basic knife. So it's, not many people are going to be scared of this. This is perfect for the office, lunchroom. Um, if you're at work where a lot of coworkers don't really like knives, they're not really going to be too scared of this. Although somebody will always find something to complain about. But hey, that is life. Um, but yeah, it's very simple design, but very effective. Um, after that is the uh, choil. The choil is very comfortable. Um, it's a lot like the uh, Spyderco Dragonfly. How it has the half finger choil that is also part of the blade. Um, but this one is more of a full size. This one on the Dragonfly. Um, it, it is. It's about half size. So like your finger doesn't fully like go inside of it. It just rests there. But on this one, your index finger does go completely in. And right there, the edge does start. So when you first get this, you might have to get used to just bringing your finger back just a little bit. But I have not cut myself doing that in the three to four years I've had it. 
So yeah. Um, so choice, um, liner. I do love how this is a liner lock. Um, I love liner locks. Um, some people don't think they're as strong as frame locks, and I can see why they say that. But honestly, my biggest complaint about the squid is that it's a frame lock. I just don't like how they feel. I don't like how the, excuse me, how the, uh, piece of the frame slides in. I don't, it's just not really, uh, super comfortable. But I can do it. Um, but I do tend to like liner locks. Um, so yeah. Um, and that's pretty much all the good that I have um, for right now. Um, I mean, this is, the GFN is actually pretty textured with its uh, with the Kershaw K texture on there. Um, it does stay in hand pretty well with that, and also with all the uh, finger grooves and the choil. Sticks to that pretty well. So yeah, that's my uh, good um, Ergo's size, the belly, um, the tools it has on it. It's simple design, that amazing finger choil, the liner lock, and the uh, grippy GFN. Alrighty, now we get into the bad. So what is bad about this knife? First off, the action. Um, when I first got it, um, again, this is a $20 knife. I forgot to mention that in the specs, but this is... The most expensive version of the Kershaw one you'll find is probably around 20 bucks. Um, I looked this up on Blade HQ, it's about $15, $16. And they have a whole bunch of other versions. They have like a teal version, a green version, purple, some with black stonewashed blades. Um, they also have the Shuffle 2, which has a Tonto tip, but I'm not a, soup, a huge fan of American Tontos. It's just not my thing. But yeah, um, the action wasn't great. But it, being a $15 knife, it is very adequate. Um, and you don't have to flick it out. Um, you can just roll it out. It is pretty smooth, but the detent just isn't really there. I mean, it is, but it doesn't help a whole lot. And um, it's a little gritty after a while. Um, there's an internal stop pin. So as you can see in there, there is not a pin showing. It's actually inside, right next to the pivot of the knife. It just follows which is actually very innovative for this cheap of a knife. But that's what Kershaw does. They're, they're kind of like CRKT. They bring a lot of innovation into the market. Um, but yeah, so the action ink isn't great. Um, steel is, um, this version is a 3CR13 MOV, so that is just straight up bad. Um, I mean, it is capable, but honestly, I'll sharp, I sharpen this thing up, cut one piece of paper, and it feels like it's dull again. So, um, the new versions are saying that they're, um, 8CR13 MOV, so again, not great, but certainly very good, I'm mean, not very good, but practical for everyday carry. Um, next on this is the hardware is just bad, um, this is a free spinning pivot, so that's kind of a want-want kind of thing. Um, all these screws, as you can see, there's one, two, three screws for the backspacer. Um, that does make sense because of how much torque is going to be on this with the bottle opener, screwdriver, and the pry bar. But they're kind of weird. Um, I want to say they're called acorn screws. But So you have your main screw here, like your bolt. But then on this side, it's just kind of like a nut. But like it does, it's circular, so it doesn't really grab onto anything. So you really have to like, to take this apart, it's a pain in the neck. you got to like... Just be pressing down on it as much as possible just to be able to get it to move and forget it if you put any kind of thread locker on there because you're not getting that off. They'll just loosen up a little bit and then just start spinning on you. Um, but yeah, and the uh, clip is the uh, screw clips, I mean the clip screws, sorry guys, can't talk today. Um, they're pretty good. Um, I did bend the clip out um, at one point um, and then I bent it back and then I actually lost that one. Because I took it off at one point. I forget why. But um, when I did that. Uh, when I found this again. Because I had actually lost this knife for a while. Um, I contacted uh, Kershaw. And they were able to send me a, a new clip. So they have a pretty good uh, warranty. And I've worked with them before. And that's pretty good. But um, yeah. So the hardware is a little eh. Um. This could be just me, but um, with it being made in China, um, I'm not a huge fan of that. I mean, I know there's a lot of good stuff out of China, but I'm more of a uh, made-in-the-U.S. kind of guy. Um, 
I mean, it's not like I won't buy stuff from China, obviously. I mean, I still, I'll still buy it, but I much rather prefer supporting our uh, U.S. of A makers. So, yeah, um, that's a personal preference thing there. Um, and the last thing is the blade finish. Now, as I said before, this has a bead blasted finish. Um, and I took it off just because I hate the look of bead blasted. Um, you can see right, right up there. There's still some, uh, sorry about the guys, I don't know what that noise was. But, um, there's still some of that remaining bead blast. But as you can see, there's a speck of rust there. Um, let me, let me see something real quick. Yeah, just by that, uh, just by the thumb stud right there. It's a little bit of rust. Um, and that's just because, um, for one, 3CR and 8CR aren't the most corrosion resistant. Um, from what I've heard and seen, um, in like reviews and stuff, um, 8CR is actually pretty much the same as D2 when it comes to corrosion resistance, so it's not really, <coughs> oh, excuse me, um, it's not really, um, a stainless steel, it's, well, I mean, it's stainless, like it does stain less than your carbon steels, but it will still corrode, so it's not corrosion resistant, so yeah, so all I did was I just took some, like, uh, like 1200 grit sandpaper, something like that, and I just did a little hand rub finish on there, you can kind of see it. It's actually very shiny and so smooth to the touch. It just feels like glass. It's amazing. But yeah, um, just because I didn't like how it was. But yeah, that's really my biggest things I don't like about it. Is the action is kind of gritty. Um, the steel is just not great. Especially on this one with the 3CR. Um, the hardware is just almost impossible to work with. Um, it is made in China. So that's not a big... It's not a... Uh, a huge hurrah for me um and the blade finish um so yeah that's basically the uh, whole review um now i did say i was going to compare these a lot and i didn't do that a whole lot but um they are very similar when it comes to smaller knives you can see the lanyard hole is very similar um they have about the same amount of blade length the only thing is this the uh, squid does not have a forward finger choil, which i honestly wish it did that'd make me love it so much more um, and just and with these two versions I have, um, you honestly can't compare them at all because this, the Squid is the Blade HQ exclusive with the D2 steel. So it has way better edge retention than the 3CR. Um, but the, if this was just, if these were both, um, the current versions, they'd both have 8CR. So very similar. Um, the shuffle would be a lot lighter because... The squid has full stainless steel scales, so um, the, I'd give that to the shuffle there. Um, I'd probably also give um, useful edge to the shuffle, just because it has a lot of belly. Um, and I like that more in my knives than just as kind of straight with a little bit. It also has a better point, in my opinion. It has more of a piercing point, even though it is a wider blade. Um, it has a higher grind, so that generally means a thinner edge. Um, and this squid does kind of have a thicker edge, which is okay for, again, its price range. The normal one is about 20 bucks, very similar to the shuffle. But I, I prefer a very thin edge, as most people out there do. Um, the shuffle also has this beautiful swedge right here, which really reduces drag as you're cutting through things which the uh, squid does not. Um, but yeah, um, just small little things, as you can see, very similar knives, um, but also totally different when you start digging down into them. Well, guys, um, that's basically it for the review. So um, I appreciate you stopping by, um, spending your almost 20 minutes of your life with me. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, you guys can go ahead and give this a like. Um, go ahead and comment. Um, you guys can comment which of these two is your favorite. Because I'm interested in hearing who is more of a squid fan, who is more of a shuffle fan. Or if it's not just the knife, if you hate both knives. But are you do you like Kershaw over CRKT or vice versa? So, um, 
yeah, um, if I didn't say it already, um, subscribe if you're new here and you just happen to stumble upon this channel. Um, I really appreciate you watching. And um, I, I think I'm going to change my uh, post date, my post day, to Saturday. I thought over it well, during this video and I figured it's just easier as of right now. Um, it might change in the future, but with this whole coronavirus thing, um, I don't work on Saturdays, so it'll be easier for me. So, yeah. Um, have a great day, and I'll see you next week.